Hello guys, welcome back. I'm Yusuf Shakil and you are watching CSS tutorial series. In this video, we are going to learn about CSS syntax. So let's get started. All right, open brackets and inside the CSS dash project folder, create a new file and save it as syntax.html and write the following HTML code. So we have the doc type set to HTML. We have the opening and closing HTML tag. We have the opening and closing head tag. And we have set the title for this page to syntax. And we have the opening and closing body tag. And the body is empty at the moment. And now let us go ahead and check live preview. All right. Now inside the body tag, I'll go ahead and create three paragraphs. This is a sample paragraph, the second paragraph and the last para. Now inside the CSS folder, I'll go ahead and create a new file, syntax.css. And now inside the syntax.html file, inside the head tag, I will include the syntax.css file. So link rel stylesheet href css slash syntax.css. So we are including the syntax.css file, which is inside the CSS folder. This is external style method. To learn more about the different types of style methods, check the getting started video of this tutorial series, which is given in the info card. Now let's say we want to change the font size of these paragraphs to 24 pixels. So for that, we have to write CSS style rule. We can do this either by using inline style method or embedded style method or external style method. In this case, we are using the external style. So inside the syntax.css file, we are going to write P for paragraph. And in CSS, this is a selector. A selector in CSS tells us about the HTML element that will be affected by the style rule. In this case, we want to target the paragraphs. So for this case, our selector is P. After the selector, we have the opening and closing curly brackets. Now, inside the opening and closing curly brackets, we write property colon value where property is some valid CSS property and value is some valid value for that property. And after the value we use semicolon. In this case, we want to change the font size of the paragraphs and we want to set the font size to 24 pixels. So we'll write font size and we'll set the value to 24 pixels. And you can see the output. The paragraphs are now having 24 pixels font size. Now let's say we have a heading tag inside the body h1 heading and let's say we want to change the font size of this heading to 30 pixels and color to red so in this case our selector will be h1 so let us go ahead and write h1 and then we will have the opening and closing curly brackets. And since we want to set the font size to 30 pixels, so we'll write font size 
and we'll set the value of this property to 30 pixels and we want to set the color of this heading to red so we'll set the color property to red so we have this heading h1 having font size 30 pixels and color set to red now let us talk about the css comments in css if we want to create a comment we use forward slash asterisk or star and to close the comment we use star forward slash so we can write over here this is for heading h1 and we can write a comment for the paragraph saying this is for paragraph p we use css comments to create small notes and to remove style rules in this case you can see we have a comment which says this is for paragraph p it is a good way to tell a developer that this style rule is for paragraphs Similarly, we can use comments to turn off or remove a style rule without deleting that line from this file. So let's say we have set the color property for this paragraph selector to blue. So now we have all the paragraphs in blue color. But let's say after a few days, we want to get back to the previous color and we don't want to apply this rule. And we also don't want to remove this line. So the good way to do this is to comment this out. So we'll use forward slash star and we'll close the comment by using star forward slash. So now we have this line in our file but it is inactive because we have commented it out. So we use comments to create small notes and turn off style rules. All right, now let us talk about the different ways to select HTML elements and apply style rules. So the first way to select an HTML element is by using the element name. In this case, P and H1, these are the elements name. This is a paragraph element and this one is for heading element, H1. So we are selecting all the paragraph element using the P tag and we are selecting all the H1 element using the H1 tag. So this is one way of selecting the elements in an HTML page and applying the rules. Another way to select elements is by ID. So let us go back to syntax.html file. And let's say we want to give this first paragraph an ID. Let's say first. Now, let's say we want to change the font size of this paragraph having ID first to 30 pixels. So if we go back to syntax.css file, we can see that we already have a style defined for all the paragraphs using the P selector. And we have already set the font size to 24 pixels. Now in order to target this paragraph having ID first, we'll write hash, this is for ID, and we'll write the value of that ID, which is first. And now we'll write the opening and closing curly brackets, and we'll set the font size to 30 pixels. 
And now if we look at the output, we can see the first paragraph is slightly bigger than rest of the two paragraphs. So it is having a font size 30 pixels and other paragraphs are having font size 24 pixels. Another way to select HTML elements is by class value. So let us go back to syntax.html file and this time let us give the second paragraph class attribute and set the value of the class attribute to let's say para and let us give the third paragraph a class attribute and set its value to para and now let's say we want to change the color of this two paragraphs having class para to blue so in this case we go back to syntax.css file and for class we use dot followed by the class value in this case para and we want to set the color to blue so we'll write color and we'll set the value to blue so now if you look at the output, you can see the two paragraphs having class para is now in blue color. Another way to select HTML elements in a page is to combine the element name and the ID value. Let's say for example, we have this paragraph having ID first and we want to target this element and we want to change its color to green. So we go back to syntax.css file and since it's a paragraph and we want to use the element name and the ID value. So we'll write the element name and for ID we use hash followed by the ID value. And in this case, the ID value is first. So we'll write first. And we want to change the color to green. So we'll set the color property to green. And now the first paragraph is in green color. In a similar way, we can use element name and class value to target HTML elements and style them. So if we go back to syntax.html file and this time let's say we want to target paragraphs having class value para. So we are targeting the second and the third paragraph. And let's say we want to align the text at the center. So in this case, we'll go back to syntax.css and since we are targeting the paragraph, so we'll write the element name P and since we are targeting it by class value, so for class we use dot and the value of this class is para. So we'll use para then we'll have the opening and closing curly brackets and we'll set the text align property to center. And now the text of the paragraphs having class value para is center aligned. All right, guys, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I'll post the tutorial notes on my website, dyclassroom.com. The link will be in the description. And all the code that we are writing in this tutorial series, I'll put them in my GitHub repository. The link will be in the description, so please check that out. And if you find this video interesting, then please give this video a like and please subscribe my channel. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and like always, stay happy and keep smiling. Bye!